pilgrimages. A sharp drop in arrivals, notably from Europe, due to political instability in the Mediterranean region, but a contrary development in that numerous Brazilians, Russians, Africans and Indians are arriving in large numbers, an example to imitate. In Haifa, a traditional Marian procession to the sanctuary of Stella Maris, a lower attendance this year, above all by Palestinians, on a day of violence, even on the Syrian and Lebanese borders. But it was the faith of these Christians and the statue of Mary which looked down from Mount Carmel on a land in continued search of peace. An exhibition has opened in Haifa, reproducing the Giotto frescoes in the chapel of the Scrovegni in Padua. It will remain open until June the 20th within the Crusader Citadel. A new church for Aqaba, the Jordanian port which is home to 750 Catholics. The foundation stone was blessed by the Latin Patriarch of Jerusalem, His Beatitude Fuad Twal, who also inaugurated the Regina Pace Center for the Disabled. In Bethlehem, since 2008, the Franciscan Social Service Office takes care of local Christians, some of whom live in precarious conditions within the city's already difficult social environment. Differing faces and complexions. New profiles in pilgrimage to the Holy Land are emerging. Visitors come from afar, Africa, Asia, and Latin America. And yet at the holy places there is a sharp drop in the number of visitors amidst the cancellation of reservations for June and July, especially on the part of Italians. This is due to the political instability in the Mediterranean area, a fact confirmed by the Israeli Ministry of Tourism. If during the period from January to April, a million visitors arrived in Israel, only 300,000 came here in April, that is to say 6% fewer than in the same period last year. It is a difficult time, not only due to economic considerations, but also, alas, to fear. Yet the same statistics reflect an increase in pilgrimage from beyond Europe, notably Russia. Following close behind are South Americans, especially from Brazil, showing an increase as much as 79% and comprising a total of 50,000 pilgrims in 2010 alone. There has also been an increase in pilgrimage by black South Africans, and there is a growing presence of Chinese, South Koreans and Indians, groups of visitors who are coming to the Holy Land in large numbers without fear, an example to imitate. Yes, the increase, big increase. Yes, we are expanding rapidly. It seems that no, those few who cancelled have reinstated their reservations. Next year we expect more than a million Indian Christians to come to the Holy Land. The same is true for pilgrims from Brazil. Social conditions in Brazil have improved in recent years, and this means that people who had only dreamed of coming to the Holy Land are now able to do so. In addition, agencies are allowing pilgrims to pay for their trips in installments, making things much easier for them. And so, despite news of conflict in the Mediterranean area, groups are coming here and fewer cancellations are being made. I was not afraid to come here, well, maybe a little, due to the demonstrations in neighboring Arab countries, but Israel has surprised me. I did not encounter any danger. I found tranquility, and I'm very happy to be here. I found peace and have not been afraid of anything. We are in a moment of peace. It's very good to be here at the right time. This is an enthusiastic people who are thrilled to be able to travel to the land of our Lord. And this is quite something, don't you think? Yet the land of the good news still awaits pilgrims, who can come here in complete safety, which this group from Italy confirms. The pilgrimage is going very well. And so I would like to extend an invitation to Italians and other would-be pilgrims to come here to the Holy Land without anxiety. First of all, it must be said that the Holy Land is safe. Despite reports in the mass media which tend to generalize, pilgrimage to the Holy Land is absolutely safe and there are no grounds for anxiety. That said, Pilgrimage is also a source of support for many families and a powerful element in social moderation and, I don't want to appear rhetorical, an element of peace because pilgrims do not come here with a political agenda but to visit, to pray, to learn and to meet everyone, Israelis, Palestinians, Muslims, Christians, Jews and so on. An important element of social moderation in a country that is in great need of this.
importante di cui vive il paese e di cui questo paese ha estremamente bisogno. Touching and encouraging. And the many children who can be seen here every day. These groups of young Muslims visiting the Holy Sepulcher come from Hebron. And others who come here from farther away imitating their parents suggest a travelogue, certainly a sign of hope for peace. Few of the participants in a traditional Easter time Marian procession through the streets of Haifa were aware of events that were taking place a few dozen kilometers away. On Nakba Day, when Palestinians remember the flight of hundreds of thousands of their compatriots with the establishment of the State of Israel, many incidents occurred in Jerusalem and throughout the West Bank, as well as on the Lebanese and Syrian borders. Twenty were killed, and the events had repercussions in Haifa. Palestinians were unable to take part in the Haifa procession, which exceptionally included the carrying of relics of St. Therese of Lézieux, as they had not been granted permission to leave the Palestinian territories in order to do so. By mid-afternoon, much of the city had stopped for three hours in order to watch scouts accompany the statue of Our Lady of Mount Carmel to the rhythm of their drums. And on this sunny spring Sunday, traffic came to a halt as the procession wound its way from the Latin parish to the monastery of Stella Maris. At the same time, the absence of many would-be participants was noticeable, for while 10,000 joined the procession this year, the figure was twice the amount in 2010. Nevertheless, those who were able to attend the event were numerous enough to impress and encourage the Christian community of Haifa, a minority in Israel's third city. It's an annual event, and it is very good to see so many Christians participate in belief and prayer. This is a manifestation of great faith. Enough of complaining about everything. This celebration is beautiful because despite everything, people feel happy and relaxed. For after all, we have time to pray and to thank the Lord for everything. At the end of the procession, and before the relics, pastors of the local church were accompanied by the Apostolic Nuncio, Archbishop Antonio Franco, and many other visiting priests, including, among others, the Auxiliary Bishop of Jerusalem, William Shomeli, and the Patriarchal Vicar for Israel, Bishop Jacinto Mercuzzo. Towards sunset, the procession reached the monastery of Our Lady, Star of the Sea, where a boys' choir sang Marian hymns to welcome the relics of the patron saint of the missions. In conclusion, the hierarchy, on an improvised stage, thanked the faithful for their participation in deep and heartfelt expressions of faith. Once again, against a background of seemingly never-ending clashes, an image of Mary, a fount of hope, looked down from Mount Carmel with hope on a land which has become exhausted by hatred. A presentation of photographs taken in Iskrovenyi Chapel in Padua and recently exhibited in Jerusalem, Tel Aviv and Jaffa can now be seen in Haifa. Presented on a scale of 1 to 4, the images feature the splendid frescoes painted by Giotto in the early 14th century and featuring scenes from the life of Jesus and his mother Mary. The exhibitions, created by Giorgio de Ganello, are now arranged directly by the custody of the Holy Land through the generosity of the city of Padua. Inaugurated last week by Fra Quirico Calella, who represents the custody in Acre, the display is presented by Dr. Rivka Sevi, an art historian and an expert in the restoration of paintings. The photographs will remain on display until June the 20th in the Hall of the Knights of St. John, within a citadel which dates back to the Crusades, when Acre was an important destination for pilgrims visiting the Holy Land. It was at this time that Giotto, commissioned by Enrico Scrovegni, was depending on descriptions by pilgrims returning from the Holy Land to give his frescoes as authentic a background as possible. Stella Maris is the name which has been given to the new church in Aqaba. The foundation stone was blessed on May 15th by the Latin Patriarch of Jerusalem, his Beatitude Fouad Toual, who was on a pastoral visit to the Jordanian port. The new building meets the needs of a growing community, united in celebration, especially for the 17 young people who made their first Holy Communion and were confirmed by the Patriarch. The new church will comprise two floors, 
the upper one being a large communal hall. The project has as its principal aim the provision of impetus and strength to local Christians, who, as has been said, constitute a minority. It is hoped that the building dedicated to Our Lady, Star of the Sea, will serve as a center for encounter and spiritual renewal. This Sunday celebration represented an important day for Aqaba. In the morning, the Regina Pachi Center for the Disabled was inaugurated, and the Patriarch was there together with the Patriarchal Vicar to Jordan, Bishop Salim Sayyid, the Governor of Aqaba, and Prince Rayed of Jordan, as well as various civil dignitaries, all of whom met with guests and staff. The Patriarch stressed the need and importance of caring for the disabled, who needed to gain self-confidence and a place in society. This is precisely the aim of Regina Pachis, a center at a crossroads of culture and religion. The Franciscan Social Service Office was born in 2008, and it has the role of continuing the mission of the Franciscans, and this has lasted since their first presence here. The first testimonies of the Franciscan presence in Bethlehem are precisely those of medical, sanitary, and humanitarian help to the Christian communities. Active since November 2008, the Franciscan Social Service Office guarantees help to the Christians who live in difficult conditions in the city where Jesus was born. The director of the center, Vincenzo Bellomo, accompanies us to discover these activities taking place of the welfare services which the Palestinian Authority is unable to guarantee. This is a center of social services. It is a space where the social worker, Suad, welcomes the people who come. The office is open every day as a center for listening to people. But it is also a place where the social worker works as counselor and tries to deal with the bureaucracy. The office takes care of many families, explains Suad, some of them in very serious difficulties. Many of the families whom we help, she explains, need medical assistance, and some are in extreme situations. There is one family, Suad tells us, where the mother lives alone with three children because the father is an alcoholic, and they take care of these people. The collaboration with the association Pro Terra Santa continues with success. One of the main activities that we have now is to support the elderly. Anna, especially, is responsible for following the Antonian Society, which is a resident center for the elderly who have serious difficulties. The land where Vincenzo and his staff operate is a difficult one, a land which has faced many challenges and where difficulties and problems are daily occurrences. It is a human work at the service of a community which is not easy to follow. The community of Bethlehem is a particular community. It was a community which in these past years has lived through the Intifada, has experienced war and is now under an enclosure which is terrible for those who live on this side of it. Still, the task of each one is clear, and Father Marwan, who is both parish priest and director of the office, follows tirelessly in the steps of his founder. St. Francis taught us to be humble with everyone, and the servants of everyone, from the smallest to the greatest. Beginning with the smallest means the poorest and the most needy. Here in Bethlehem, we have seen so many needy people, so many who are less fortunate than so many others in the world for the simple fact that they don't have a possibility to go to work. They don't have the possibility to cross the wall to Jerusalem. They never have permission to do it, and they find themselves in great difficulty. And it is here that we must intervene, and it is here that we must provide assistance. It is here that we must work, and it is here that we must clearly manifest our mission, which is also our vocation, to serve all, especially the poorest. Servire tutti, specialmente i più poveri.